What's up and welcome to my live performance analysis of this Asus Strix G17 with an RTX 3070 Ryzen 9 5900HX, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, 300, uh, 300 hertz display with 355 nits brightness, 93% sRGB. Uh, this thing is one amazing laptop. Uh, and in my review, I talk about the performance, but I don't go into detail, like intricate detail. And in this analysis, I'm gonna try to go into much greater detail. Now, since I am doing this live, I will try to answer some questions from chat in the middle and then at the end. So chat, if you want to prepare some questions for during the intermission um, but just keep the questions related to the Strix G17 and the performance numbers that we're looking at if you can um, and if there's no questions that's fine too but let's go ahead and get this started so first of all the power limits are extremely important um, now during the heaven benchmark the RTX 3070 ramps up to 127.5 uh, watts on average and this is basically the the level of performance that's like sustainable when the gpu is engaged and the cpu is very low usage now when you're doing a handbrake render test with the cpu so this is the cpu only test uh we got 76.5 watts of power so these are really good numbers um, overall, and I think better than last year's model, though the Strix G17 did get pretty close to this number for the CPU, but that is an Intel CPU, so a lot less performance for the same wattage. Um, and then the GPU, I believe, was more like this number for the RTX 2070. So now we're getting extra bit of wattage into the GPU, giving us more performance than we had in the previous generation. Now, these two numbers right here, um, the 54 and 111, these represent the dual stress test. So when we're taxing the CPU to the max and the GPU to the max using the Heaven Benchmark and the Fire Strike physics test. Now, the key thing here is that when both are engaged, Dynamic Boost basically cannot uh, fully utilize both the CPU and GPU to the maximum potential, which is the numbers we see up here. So uh, basically, yeah, it's basically when you have both engaged, you get slightly reduced performance. Now, in my now for raw 3D performance, we have Time Spy graphics, uh, and this is kind of where we start getting Nvidia Optimus involved in the discussion because the laptop on uh, the the laptop CPU and GPU basically work in tandem to display the video output from the Nvidia GPU, routing the video from the Nvidia RTX. 3070 through the Radeon integrated GPU in the Ryzen processor. And this is the key here that enables free sync on the integrated GPU and that prevents screen tearing and extends your battery life when you can turn off the graphics card. But the downside is well, that basically uh, adds a bottleneck to CPU bound games. And so when we hook up the laptop to an external display, we get additional performance. And this is because we're bypassing NVIDIA Optimus. Uh, and I made a whole video about this. If you want to go check that out, there is a link in the description down below later, not right now, but on my main channel, there's a video talking about uh, the whole debacle of like losing a bunch of frame rates, especially in CPU bound games and esports titles. So yeah, um, now in terms of 3D brown, uh, in terms of 3D bound stuff like Time Spy, you get very minimal performance loss. You can see the difference here of 10809, uh, so about a little over 300 points between these two. Uh, and so with when you bypass NVIDIA Optimus, you just get that nice little performance bump. And these numbers are really good, I think, for a laptop, especially around the $18, especially for around a especially for a laptop around the $1,800 price point. So uh, you can see, uh, Look at look at these numbers, right? So we have the Strix. All three of these top numbers are from the Strix G17. And then look at these numbers, right? These are from the last couple of years. Uh, and we've got a 2080 Super Max P putting out 10,009, right? That was a little lower than I thought the Alienware would actually put out on this M17 R3. Um, and we're outperforming that. And look at the price difference. It's a $1,300 price difference on how it's spec'd as well. Uh, and so that just goes to show you, like, 
you're getting some insane bang for the buck with this G17. Uh, and uh, I'm just really impressed, at least with the synthetic numbers. Uh, that said, let's keep going. So time spy points per pound. This represents the graphical performance you can take with you on a per pound basis. So this kind of helps represent the performance that maybe a super thin and light laptop like the GS66 Stealth might provide to you. Uh, but the interesting part about this whole thing is that this RTX 3070 is giving us insane performance per pound because uh, it's, it only weighs six pounds. The, the G17 only weighs six pounds and yet we're still getting so much performance. So uh, 1,800 points per pound. Now our points per dollar again tops out the chart. This goes to show you just how much value you're getting from the Strix G17 and it's just it's it's insane. Like it's kind of it just really knocked my socks off when I made these graphs. I was like holy crap this is in a whole new class of performance per dollar than anything we've seen before because when you look at these this is an $800 laptop. It's it's crazy performance per dollar. It's a 1650 Ti. Um, and yet, even though this costs more than twice as much, it's providing more than double the performance. So just I incredible. And I can't wait to see the performance per dollar graphs for like, I don't know, like a $1,000 uh, 3060 Max P GPUs. We might, we might surpass this. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, Cinebench R23. So this is a, an example of an extended CPU render performance. So we've got 13,000. 466. This is just an incredible score. My Alienware Area 51M with an i9 9900K that hits 153 watts in this exact test, I measured it, uh, only caught 11,632. And this requires two power bricks, and this one is just a little power brick, and it only goes to 80 watts, and we're getting like way more performance. <laughs> And then when you compare it to my Razer Blade Pro with an i7-10875, we only got 6,600. And look at this. Boom. More than double again. It's like, oh my god. The, the performance disparity between the 8-core Intel and the Ryzen 9 5900HX, at least in Cinebench, is absurd. Now, we're going to take a look at some handbrake tests as well. That kind of gives you a better idea of real-world performance difference, and it's not quite as crazy as this, but that's also the handbrake test is going to be... Uh, the bigger difference, the longer the workload. Like this is a very extended workload versus the handbrake is like a shorter video render. Now, Cinebench R20 is another shorter uh, render test. So the differences between them are not as apparent because the Strix G17 can just maintain and sustain that load nonstop continuously, which is what's so impressive. Whereas like the Razer Blade Pro will ramp up with turbo boost for a little while and then it'll go down. Um, so this might score a little higher than 3600. Uh, but when you continuously run Cinebench R20, the score drops down to this, this point. Now this is the throttled score. So this means that whenever you're running a Cinebench R20, the first time you do it, turbo boost, the initial boost is a higher wattage. And then after 26 seconds, usually it drops down to a lower wattage and that's the long power limit. Now, so this basically represents the long power limit potential of each laptop, at least in Cinebench R20. Um, Cinebench R20 points per pound. This sucker uh, is solid on points per pound for Cine uh, Cinebench performance, but it's not amazing. This graph will eventually be updated to Cinebench R23, um, but I don't have enough data to swap it over to that. I think, th I think the Strix G17 would score higher on this comparison in a Cinebench R23 graph. Um, same for this one. I'm eventually going to switch over to Cinebench R23 when I have enough data. But you can see this is still number two for points per dollar. So for $1,800 spent, you're still getting just so much performance per dollar. Okay, so handbrake, 4K render time. Now these two at the top here are desktop CPUs in a laptop. And you can see that they did quite well in the handbrake render time. Now this is a 16-core uh, CPU and this is an 8-core desktop CPU. Um, and this is just a straight laptop CPU that has great battery life, is in a much thinner chassis. Like both of these top two are super thick and beefy laptops. Um, and yet this one's still doing so well, comparatively speaking. Now, uh, you can see the temperature, the power limit, and the average CPU clock as well here on the left if you want to take a look at that later. 
Now, this is the noise comparison between the 2020 Asus Strix G17 and the 2021 Strix G17. So you can see that depending on uh, what power profile or fan profile you set the laptop to, there is a dramatic difference in performance. The 2021 version has noticeably less decibels. So I, I so you can see it's about three decibels roughly, uh, except for the max fan mode where you get a little bit louder um, on the new one actually. So about two decibels difference on the max fans. Now, Asus ROG Strix uh, Heaven plus Fire Strike stress test. So this tests the temperatures, right? So this is the 2020 version, and you can see the temperatures are quite high on the CPU, especially with manual fans going maximum speed. We still only got 89 degrees Celsius. That's pretty spicy on the temperatures. Um, so yeah now if you go ahead and jump over to the new ones you can see that we have dramatically improved thermals for almost all of the different fan profiles except for these two i believe now keep in mind that in manual fan mode you can actually set the fan curve to be whatever you want and so if you want like an in between like turbo and manual you can do that and kind of find the middle ground here and also i want to point out that these temperatures will tend to run a lot higher than you'll actually see in real games real games have much reduced temperatures because this is a dual basically 90 plus percent load on the cpu and gpu and very few games can put that kind of load on a on a uh, on the hardware um, but overall this is still a really impressive uh, clock speed being able to maintain when it's a dual load on the gpu and the cpu right because oftentimes laptops have to severely throttle or power limit their hardware so that they don't overheat but because we have such power efficient hardware in this laptop we're just getting really great performance even under a dual load stress test now i benched now now I did 15 different benchmarks and you can see that it is quite crazy on the performance scale overall. And the thing is, these are basically max settings on almost every single title, uh, even in things like Cyberpunk 2077, you know, we got RTX on Ultra, uh, graphic settings on Ultra, DLSS on quality, and we're averaging 56 FPS with 41%, 1% low. So we're getting some really great performance. And we're going to see how this laptop stacks up against some of the other laptops here in a second. Now, I'm going to go ahead and check the chat and see if you guys have any questions related to the performance of the Strix G17. Okay. So, how we doing, chat? Can you turn off the fans with manual settings? I'm not sure the this, this spuffo. Um, like I got the laptop right here. I can go ahead and pull it up, but I, I'm not sure. I think with manual fans, you can certainly tune them to be a lot lower um, overall. Jojo, this is the laptop that we're giving away, the Strix G17. It seems like TDP is the selling point for performance in an RTX 3060 high TDP can blow out the RTX 3070 at low TDP. That's something that we're noticing, Joey, in a lot of these new RTX laptops is that if you have a low TDP a version and a high TDP version, that can make a big difference. And I think the other thing to keep in mind with this whole thing is that a lot of reviewers are not realizing how NVIDIA Optimus is impairing the performance of the hardware right like it, it's it's funneling the the video output through the integrated gpu uh and like the asus tough dash f15 for example that's an intel based uh processor but it's still using optimus and so uh, i saw some really bad <laughs> benchmarks on a few different uh reviews that implied that it was much slower than the RTX like 2070, 2060. Um, and it shouldn't be in theory, right? Even a Max Q version should be able to at least compete or beat them by a little bit. But I think it's because of Nvidia Optimus that we're seeing a lot of this disparity as well. So I think when you're looking at the, the differences between all these GPUs, you got to keep all of the, 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 the Optimus bottlenecking in mind uh, whenever you're looking at these reviews. Ask, hi, can you tell how good 
the backlight bead bleed on the laptop is and can you disable RGB light from the bottom panel so you can disable the RGB lights on the machine all the way around uh, just by uh, using FN and the RGB light button and that disables it on the keyboard and the under lights um, and then the backlight bleed I never noticed it when I was using the laptop at all but I did not do a hard test I probably need to focus on that more but I've never really been bothered by backlight bleed very much unless it was really bad um, but I need to add that into my testing to be more thorough um, Alienware M17 R4 has Optimus Advanced. Do you think the difference with the bottleneck that the Strix has will level up with the Alienware with the i9? I do think the Alienware M17 will probably perform a little better in esports titles because of Advanced Optimus. If it truly is making that NVIDIA GPU access the laptop monitor directly, then, then that's a, a really good thing. And that could also maybe warrant the price difference, right? Because I think the Alienware starts at $200 more and whenever you include something like Advanced Optimus, that increases the cost of a laptop as well. So you don't get an Advanced Optimus for free uh, that I know of. Like that's the, that's the best knowledge that I have right now. Uh, I don't know how much it costs, though, uh, for a manufacturer to actually do it. Does the 2021 model have the same thermal design as the 2020 model? Uh, I have not... I, I, no, they do not have the same thermal design because... Uh, there's a number of differences between them. First of all, you've got liquid metal, and it's an AMD CPU. Both of them had liquid metal, first of all. They both had liquid metal when I tested them. But uh, the new uh, fans in the new version are quieter, and they move more air. Um, and they're improved in that, in that sense. Has it ever thermal throttled? Not that I ever noticed, Ken J, because... Anytime you're doing just games, right? I think, I mean, in my stress test, it may have thermal throttled a little bit on the GPU, uh, right at that 82 degrees. I'm not sure. I wasn't paying close enough attention, but in normal games, we never saw that high of temps. So I don't think in any kind of normal gameplay, we ever saw any thermal throttling. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and hop into to the game benchmarks now and continue on. Here we go. Okay, so uh, this is the overview of the game benchmarks, and we're going to just go ahead and hop into some matchups now. And you can see how this uh, performance difference uh, can can basically be highlighted versus last gen hardware. Um, but I guess before that, I also have a slide here about Optimus versus bypassing Optimus. So you can see these bars on the left, these dark blue bars. This is the performance you get with the internal laptop display. And these light blue bars right here are the performance you get on an external display hooked in through the USB-C port. And that's a very important thing. If you don't hook it through the USB-C and instead you hook it through the HDMI, you're still into the integrated uh, graphics card and you're still going to have bottlenecks from NVIDIA Optimus. Now, you still may get some good performance, but you're not going to be hitting your maximum possible performance. And so you really want to get a USB-C cable that can go to like a display port or an HDMI, basically. Or if you have a monitor that can use USB to USB-C, you can do that too. It just depends on what monitor you have. You can buy those cables on Amazon or Best Buy or just about every electronics store. Um, but you can see that in a lot of games, there's very little performance difference between NVIDIA Optimus and Bypassing Optimus. But in other titles like Rainbow Six Siege and Counter-Strike, the difference can be massive. Okay, so the, this is the performance difference compared. Um, and I, I think a lot of people might view this as a deal breaker if, for example, all you play is Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Valorant, or CSGO. If that's like your game, you play that eight hours a day, and you use the laptop display to play it, then that's when I think it should be probably a deal breaker. But if you're playing AAA titles like you know, Cyberpunk, Watch Dog Legions, uh, Red Dead Redemption, a lot of those games, you're barely gonna notice this performance difference, especially since the performance is still so good, uh, even with Nvidia Optimus in those titles. And we're gonna about to show that here. Now, Far Cry 5 benchmark performance, you can see we got four more FPS. And interestingly enough, we did not get quite as high of performance as I would have thought from the system. But overall, this is still good performance, uh, and we're still ahead of the previous generation, uh, at least with NVIDIA Optimus off. Now, the, you can see this is one game where these Intel CPUs still pull ahead. 
Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another example, but you can see with Optimus off when we're bypassing Optimus, we're getting up there right up there with the top performers in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Red Dead Redemption on Ultra, we finally take the cake, topping out the chart. Uh, and we, this is with NVIDIA Optimus enabled too. So even with NVIDIA Optimus enabled, we're still getting so much performance, especially again for the price, because these laptops that this one is competing against cost a lot more money, right? I mean, there's obviously other bang for the buck systems with RTX, say 2070 supers out there or 2080 supers that maybe only cost $2,500. So more, more bang for the buck but still really high performance but still this machine is doing fantastic especially when compared against all the machines that i have tested previously now on cyberpunk 2077 on ultra rtx on ultra and dlss on quality this is where we really see the performance shine in these new rtx 3000 graphics cards because this is basically because of the improved tensor cores and rt cores we're getting better ray tracing performance than the 2000 series Ooh, oh yeah okay good i thought my tv turned off but it was just my monitor um so what this what this means is that in games in the future with RTX and DLSS, you know, we can expect better than average performance when compared to RTX 2000 series cards. Like if in a regular game, they were very similar in performance and then you add RTX and DLSS to them, the performance gap will, lark, will likely get a little bit bigger. All right, Cyberpunk 2077, this is with RTX and DLSS off. You can still see we're getting great performance here and it, it, there's just a big jump in performance in this game. I love it. Watchdog Legion benchmark on Ultra, RTX on Ultra, DLSS on quality, and we're getting very similar performance in this title, um, but still competing against much more expensive laptops, right? <laughs> and this is with RTX and DLSS off. We got a four FPS difference right here. And then in CSGO, this is one of those games where you're getting the NVIDIA Optimus impairing the performance here. So this is the original uh, benchmark that I had, 262 FPS. Uh, this is with the internal laptop display, and this is with the external display hooked up to USB-C. And this is where we're just getting a massive performance difference, but also, right, 262 FPS, right? 262 FPS. Do you really need more than that? Are you going to notice the difference? Uh, the max refresh rate on the display is 300, right? And this is on high settings. So if you really wanted to get 300, you could just drop the settings down a little bit and you might be able to boost that up um, to hit that 300 FPS cap. I did not test that though. Okay. Rainbow Six Vulcan. Um, this is Rainbow Six Siege on Ultra. And so this is everything on max. And you can see, again, we're getting a big performance difference between NVIDIA Optimus on the internal display and uh, an external display with USB-C. So uh, overall, still, we're, we're beating, right? Because of the Ryzen 9 5900HX and because of the RTX 3070, we're still beating this much more expensive, thicker, beefier machine. And it, it's cheaper and it's lighter and it's got way better battery life. And the thermals are fantastic and it's quieter and it's still beating it. It's just, if you really want to have great performance in this title, you'll want to hook it up to an external display or... Or alternatively, you can switch to a laptop that has a MUX switch that allows you to have higher performance on the internal display. And that's a, a, a big deal for some people and not as big a deal for others. It just really depends. Now for speaker loudness, we got 78.4 decibels, which is good, but not great. I think it's, I think it's really good for this price point and the overall sound of the, the, the actual speakers, I think are very satisfying. Um, and they're going to be great. It's going to be great speakers for like watching Netflix or, you know, watching YouTube videos or listening to music in your room. I just wish that they could get a little bit louder overall. Now for battery life, you know, I went over this in my review, but basically you can kill this thing really fast if you just do some gaming or CPU rendering, or you can extend it out. And I think these are actually pretty conservative estimates. I think you might be able to go past this. I saw some battery life tests that were done. And keep in mind, this was just on my estimated values. These are not uh, hard values that I was able to measure because it just takes too much time. So these are my estimated values. And this basically, uh, is is to me a, a, an example of a great balanced laptop. Overall, I'm just really impressed with the Strix G17 in general. Um, 
and I can highly recommend it to people from a uh, from a price to performance standpoint, from a thermal standpoint, from a battery life standpoint, from a usability standpoint. Just if you're an esports player and you always play on a laptop display, you may want to consider another laptop. I think that's the biggest deal breaker from a pers from a performance perspective. That's that's like the biggest deal. I think. When can we buy this? I actually already bought this laptop uh, back on January 12th. Like they went up, that's when they first went up for sale. I made a video about you can pre-order laptops now on that same day, and I went and bought this one on that same day. So. Um, that said, I don't know. It's the, when can you buy it again? And when it's going to come back in stock? It sounds like mid March, maybe even April before it becomes more commonly available ish. But also, yeah, you might be able to put an order in now so you get in the line in the queue to buy the laptop. Do you think this would be fairly simple to undervolt? As far as I know, you cannot undervolt it. The Ryzen controller and Ryzen Master are not compatible. Uh, maybe in the future, but I, I don't. I, right now, there's no utility that allows you to undervolt it. Sure that. The keyboard. I, I do like the keyboard. I do talk about the keyboard and the build quality, but I didn't really talk about the material. I do like the material on this laptop, but I would be a little bit concerned that after maybe say three years of use, you might have like a little bit of wearing in the finish so you can see kind of where you put your hands all the time. That might be my only concern regarding the finish and, and the build quality. Overall, it's very rigid in general, except in, in the middle of the keyboard deck. I just really like the, the chassis for the price point. There are more premium chassis, like at the Aorus 17G is a full metal chassis. It's a little bit better. The, the Razor Blade, I think even the Alienware's are maybe just a little bit better, but for the money, that's the thing. For the money, it's 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 really great. I think. How would a thirty seventy Max Q do for gaming? Would I be better off with a twenty seventy or twenty seventy Super? Uh, James, I don't know. I'm pretty sure a thirty seventy Max Q should beat those GPUs in theory, unless you have a really high wattage twenty seventy Super versus a really low wattage thirty seventy Max Q. But, and the other thing is to keep in mind, NVIDIA Optimus, a lot of these benchmarks that are coming out for the 3070 Max Qs, I think NVIDIA Optimus is impairing the performance somewhat. And so uh, you can't really, you got to make sure that you're getting the full details on the performance for the 3070 Max Q laptops right now, because I think a lot of reviewers are just waking up to this whole NVIDIA Optimus uh, reducing performance issue. So, yeah. What's my opinion on portability? This is not the most portable laptop, but at the same time, it's super portable in my opinion. It fits in my backpack super easily, and it's much lighter than my Alienware. It's, it weighs the same as the Razer Blade Pro 17 that I normally carry around. So I think it's pretty portable to me. I'd, I'd haul it around all day on campus, especially since you don't have to take the power brick. You've got great battery life. That helps reduce the weight as well. Anyway, uh, that's it for this stream. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next review or live stream, which may happen later or not. I don't know. Either way, I'm definitely doing a giveaway for the Asus Strix G17 tomorrow at 1 p.m. Maybe that's when I'll do the, the Aura 17G benchmarks. Hmm. Also, a pretty cool thing I want to mention as well is uh, I'm going to be doing a live stream with Jared's Tech, Owner Disown, um, Bob of All Trades, and Rad Elk, and that's going to be like in a week or so. It's going to be pretty cool. We got a lot of interesting topics we're going to discuss, and this should be a pretty interesting collaboration. <laughs> I look forward to hanging out with those guys and chatting. So, anyway, thanks, guys. I will see you in the next one. Brandon out.